So why buy your gasoline at a gas station if you can just pull it right out of the ground and put it in your fuel tank and use it as a source of fuel? In other words, crude oil. That's the question that many of you asked me to determine whether or not crude oil would work as a gasoline substitute. Now, as many of you know, when crude oil is extracted from the ground, it's sent to a refinery where it's broken down into different types of products. One of those being gasoline, then of course there's kerosene and diesel. So could we just use straight up crude oil to use as a source of gasoline replacement? I don't know if it will or not, but what I do know is Jerry from North Dakota sent me two different types of crude oil to test, and we've got several different types of tests to conduct. So let's go ahead and get this project underway. So I was really surprised to find a safety data sheet on the light sweet crude oil. I could not find anything on the sour crude oil. So as you can see from the safety data sheet, there are quite a few different ingredients that are in light sweet crude oil when it's extracted from the ground. So light sweet crude oil, as far as the flammable properties, it says it's extremely flammable, as well as the flash point is negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit or also in minus 29 degrees Celsius. So we have two different types of crude oil to test. The sour crude oil smells very much sour because it has a high sulfur content content. The sour smell comes from the hydrogen sulfide that's in it. This crude oil was extracted from 7,000 feet out of the Madison Rock Formation. The sweet crude oil has a very low sulfur content and actually smells pretty sweet. This crude oil was extracted from the Bakken Formation around 9,000 feet below the surface. Now both of these are light crudes in terms of viscosity. So what I'll do now is pour both of these just a little bit into a cup and see if we can distinguish any sort of difference as far as appearance. The sour crude oil, you have to trust me, this stuff spells terrible. The light sweet crude oil actually seems a lot thicker than the sour, so it's going to be interesting to see how each of these performs. One of the biggest challenges we're going to face is the viscosity could impact whether or not the engine runs smoothly. The flash point is perfect to, to ensure this stuff runs. It seems to put off a vapor pretty easily, but I'm not so sure it's going to flow through the carburetor, so we may actually have to add a little bit of gasoline or something to thin it out to make it work. So if you're new to the Project Farm Channel, this is a lubricity tester that I built a while back because I really wanted to understand the film strength of different types of oil additives and oil products. So the way this bearing tester works is this will spin about 800 RPMs. I will insert a bearing in the bearing holder. I will then apply the load on top of the spinning wheel race. And when this test is complete after 30 seconds, we'll see how much scoring has taken place on the bearing. The bearing one to the right is 10W30. This is a bearing we used in a previous video. The bearing in the middle is the sour crude oil. The bearing one to the left is a light sweet crude oil. It's very interesting that a lower viscosity oil, in this case the sour crude oil, had less scoring than even 10W30 and a lot less than the light sweet crude oil. I'm gonna start off with the sour crude oil. I'm just gonna add two cups.
So the crude oil seems to have too much viscosity for this carburetor. I've got this carburetor jet opened as far as it'll go. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it with gasoline. It's gonna be about a third gasoline and two thirds light sweet crude oil. Well, I'm really surprised at how well the light sweet crude oil did as well as the sour crude oil did as a gasoline replacement. Now, the sour crude oil did not receive any sort of thinner or anything. I just ran it straight and it actually worked quite well. While the light sweet crude oil did need to be cut with a third gasoline, mainly because of viscosity issue. I think it was just as flammable, but it was just a little too thick. Now, fortunately, this carburetor on this engine does have an adjustable jet. However, there's a limit to how much it can be adjusted, and I couldn't quite get the jet to the position it needed to be in order for it to run without any sort of diluting on the light sweet crude oil. I was also pretty impressed to see how much film strength the sour crude oil had on the Lubristi tester. It actually has more film strength than regular motor oil while the light sweet crude oil didn't have quite as much. Anyway, you guys keep those great ideas coming and I'll keep making a list of projects for the future. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care and I look forward to seeing you next time.